Welcome to another In Wheel Time podcast, a 30-minute mini version of the In Wheel Time car show that airs live every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central. Podcast channel. It's the In Wheel Time car talk show. Coming up. Why does my microphone just sound so far away? Is it this thing here? Don, oh, you got to get the mic close wait, to your mouth. It's, 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 it's a knob that, that never gets used, and it's got all that scratchy. You hear it? You hear it going on in there? We don't need to hear about your yeah, personal life. <laughs> <laughs> my personal Don life. Don busy twist, yeah. twisting the knob. Twisting the knobs away. Uh, coming up, we're going to talk, well, hopefully, with Jill Trotta, a veteran of the auto industry. He's going to talk about the EV biz and expectations about the immediate future. I got to drive the 2023 Kia Telluride. I'll give you my thoughts on that. Conrad has the cruising calendar and this week in auto history. And later, we talk with Robert Hatfield uh, about the UAW strike. Plus, mm-hmm. we're bringing the stories making automotive news headlines just ahead on the In Wheel Time car talk show. Thanks so much for joining us. Howdy, along with Mike out of This World Mars, King Conrad DeLong. We need more Jeff Zekin. I'm Don Armstrong. Glad you could join us today. And while we wait for Jill, of course, we may be waiting until the cows come home. Oh, they've been called, but they're still out in the field and they ain't coming home anytime soon, I have a feeling. We're going to talk about the UAW strike. Oh. I have some ancillary stories about the strike. Of course, we've been talking about it this morning uh, on and off. And uh, yesterday, they... Didn't he take all those pictures, the black and white pictures of California, Ansel Every? No, that's Ansel Adams. I'm sorry. This is why we have you on the show. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have been talking about the lower-tiered suppliers. Now, this particular one is not so low, uh, on the, uh, but they, you know, it's the just-in-time delivery of parts to the factory because the factory is just an assembler all they do is right. take all the parts that they've designed that they've sent out to all of these other companies vendors vendors and then they put them together and bring them to the assembly plant more as a component that the assembly plant puts in the and mike just had a maroni for the, the car he reviewed on that maroni doesn't it have where the parts are coming from and where it's assembled? Well, it gives you the, the, the percentage, percentage of, of American, American oh, parts. Okay. But the other thing that it does, it has the assembly part of it somewhere. So uh, to that end, you're familiar with ZF, a yeah. company called ZF. Yeah, they build, uh, they all, build transmissions for Chrysler products. Rear ends, all sorts of uh, components, major components. If they, the strike the, against, they do the eight-speed for Stellantis. If the strike against ZF forces vehicle assembly to be shut down or reduced at Mercedes, it would create a historic situation in which UAW actions caused production to be impacted at four automakers simultaneously. UAW early Wednesday struck a ZF group plant in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, Roll Tide, that builds front and rear axles for Mercedes-Benz uh, being built nearby at a factory there, raising the prospect of vehicle production being affected there as soon as Thursday. Mercedes builds the GLS SUV, the GLE midsize crossover that both Mars and I have had, the GLE Coupe, in addition to the EQE electric crossover and the EQS electric SUV, according to Automotive News Data. And so, uh, again... So that's a shot across the bow at Mercedes. Correct. It's UAW. But Mercedes, it, but the Mercedes assembly is not UAW. That's right. This is a component supplier to Mercedes mm-hmm. assembly. And guess what? They ain't making any vehicles without a rear axle or a front axle. Correct. It's true. Period. Correct. Um, uh, uh, in that note, in that same vein, General Motors idled its Chevrolet Malibu assembly plant in Kansas oh, on Wednesday. they were selling so many and of them anyhow. On Wednesday after running short of stampings made at a Missouri plant where workers are on strike. I'm not talking about, it doesn't really make any difference what they build. It's the fact that these companies are suppliers to the big three that right, are right. being struck yeah. by the UAW. So the suppliers are in on it as well if they're a UAW factory. And the UAW knows the inner workings of that network. They know who's supplying what to who and, and how that will impact be it uh, Stellantis, GM, or, or Ford, you know, all of that. They they know how their strike choices are impacting production. Automaker said in a Wednesday statement that the roughly 2,000 
UAW represented employees at Fairfax Assembly will be off work because of the ongoing strike targeting GM's Wentzville Assembly plant. Also on Wednesday, Stellata said 68 employees at its Toledo machining plant in Perrysburg, Ohio, Ohio, were temporarily laid off because of the strike at the nearby assembly plant that builds the Jeep Gladiator and Wrangler. The automaker said it also expects to lay off 300 employees at its transmission and casting plants in Kokomo, Indiana. GM Fairfax plant builds the Malibu sedan and the Cadillac XT4 compact crossover. The Wentzville plant, which builds vans and midsize pickups for Chevy and GMC, makes deck lids for the Malibu that ran short, according to a spokesperson. So what I'm getting at is that all of these little bitty suppliers that have UAW workers, they're striking, mm-hmm. that supply the overall bigger picture of the assembly plants. Well, sure. even the assembly plant that's not shut down will be shut down because they're not sending the parts to complete the... Uh, so they're all taking shots, the UAW and GM and Ford and Chrysler are all taking shots at each other with... You know, UAW shuts down a Tier 3 or Tier 2 supply, maybe even a Tier 1 supplier that shuts down an assembly plant. And GM goes, oh, okay, we're going we're gonna to close the plant lay all those people off, which now means immediately those employees' incomes are no longer funding the strike fund. So GM's trying to reduce the UAW strike funds and their ability to pay people out on strike. So you're talking about tiers. Well... The big three cannot agree what tiers are or how to end them, according to this story. I think they know. I think that I think that's <clears throat> the pay scale within <clears throat> the UAW. So, GM, Ford, and Stellantis each say they're offering to stop having multiple wages for hourly workers, but the union wants to go further and have all workers earn equal play, pay after 90 days on the job. It's an issue so central to contract negotiations that UAW President Sean Fain has taken to wearing a red T-shirt demanding it in big, bold letters across his chest, end tears. But the union and the Detroit Three can't seem to agree on what those two words actually mean. The companies say tears refer to multiple wage structures that top out at different levels. Mm -hmm. While the union believes it's a broader definition that includes, among other things, starting new hires at a pay rate that starts lower and rises as they gain seniority. For example, at Ford's Rawsonville Components and Sterling Axle Plants, Worker hourly pay tops out around $24 versus $32 at other plants. At GM, some workers at after-sales parts distribution centers and GM's components holdings plants receive lower pay. So do workers at Stellantis' Mopar parts division. UAW has so far rejected the company's proposals, which would eliminate those different pay rates, saying they don't go far enough. Yeah, and Ford has avoided uh, additional strikes because the company has met some of the union's demands during negotiations over the past week. So that's why you're watching the UAW is focusing a little bit more on Stellantis and General Motors. Oh, and by the way, Joe Biden stated on X, or what used to be Twitter, that he's going to visit Michigan on Tuesday. Yeah, he's supposed to be picking and, up a picket And join the picket line. Yeah. I wonder who's going to hold him up and point him in what direction to walk. He'll wander off. He'll probably get hit by a car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Goofy. <laughs> but we but we found the banjo player from Deliverance. He's yeah. now the president of the United States. <laughs> Look at the side by side picture. Look at Mars. <laughs> Mars, you know, I, I will say I'm this. Not, not what I what wait, wait. Say again? I'm not gonna answer any emails this week. <laughs> Mars? You know, I, I am I am proud to say I have heard of the movie Deliverance. Honest to God, as I'm sitting here right now, I have never seen Deliverance. Oh, okay, okay. But I have an idea what's going on there. <laughs> Conrad's got it on a loop at his house. Squeal like a pig. <laughs> yeah. That's no, all it, I know. You know, there, there's the, the scene in Deliverance with the uh, kid on the porch, yeah, well, the banjo player, and then the guy, the guy that's friends with Burt Reynolds, and they sit there. He plays the uh, guitar, and the kid the on the guitar. porch. The guitar. Plays the banjo, guitar. and they have like this little banjo duel. It's a pretty famous piece of music. Mars, where's our guest? Oh, uh, I don't know. I've got two different numbers, and I get voicemail on both of them. She's watching, and we've scared her off. Yeah. 
She's in California, so. Well, there's that. There's a problem. Um, I want to d- divide off here and go in a different direction. All because, right. Um, I, thought this was, I thought that this was interesting. And Conrad, I know that you, you probably know more about this than I do, but uh, I just find that interesting. AutoNation Incorporated and Hendrick Automotive Group. Now, these are big groups of automobile dealers. Huge. They topped their respective dealership group peers for a second straight year in a reputation study released on Monday. Reputation, which aids dealership groups and automotive brands in managing online customer reviews and feedback, said in its 2023 study that AutoNation ranks first among U.S. public dealership groups. Good for them. While Hendrick is number one among the country's privately held groups. Here are the groups by numbers. Top five public U.S. dealership groups, starting at number five, Asbury Automotive. Then four is Penske Automotive. Three, Sonic Automotive. Two, Group One Automotive. And number one is AutoNation. Now, Group One is somewhat based out of the uh, Texas area as yeah, well. Yeah, I think they're out of Austin yeah, was, originally. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. it was actually uh, Mike Smith out in Beaumont, and uh, a couple other dealers got together to create Group One. Okay, top five private U.S. dealership groups. Now, some of these you won't recognize. I didn't. Uh, five, Napleton Automotive Group. Four, Holman. Three, Ken uh, Ganley. Of uh, two, West Her Auto Group. And number one, Hendrick Auto Group. <laughs> Hendrick, That's Rick Hendrick, Hendrick. Yeah, Hendrick, huge in the southeast. Yes. Um, big uh, NASCAR guy. Mm-hmm. Top five, non-luxury brands. Okay. Non-luxury, no, non-luxury brands. brands. Number five. Volkswagen, four is Honda, three is Nissan, two is Subaru, and number one, Toyota, Mitsubishi. Ah. Oh, really? Mitsubishi. I haven't heard of that that, that name in... What the... <laughs> are you kidding me? When was me? the last time you were in one? Have you seen one? Have you seen a new one? No. Hey. Oh my I'm waiting God, for a Suzuki to come back. Absolutely. <laughs> for Suzuki. Ugliest <laughs> car I think I've ever seen. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a Mitsubishi fan. Anyway. Uh, top five luxury brands. Five, Porsche. Four, Acura. Number three okay. is BMW. Number two is Lexus. Cadillac. And number one, Mercedes. Infinity. Ah, I <laughs> want to recount. <laughs> Infinity. Damn you. Yeah, recount. Infinity. Uh, Detroit-based seating supplier LM Manufacturing has temporarily laid off 650 workers due to the UAW strike, shutting down. It's customer, the one that they have. Company, a joint venture between Canadian auto supplier giant Magna International and minority-owned LAN Manufacturing, made the move in response to a work stoppage Friday that's halted production of Ford Motor Company's Bronco, among various other makes and models by the Detroit 3. Is that Lear? Is that who that the, the provider, the, the supplier is? Magna. Mag- yeah, I think I think Lear is a portion of Magna, but boy, they do a lot of seating for many manufacturers. Yeah, Lear uh, company has been competing with crosstown competitor Lear and other suppliers okay. for employees. It's not a. Uh, it, it's bizarre because we're, they can't get employees because they're all out on strike. <laughs> Besides that, I mean, in the regular everyday world, because I'm sure that they're not paying as much as some of the other ones are, and so they can't get. Yep. And if they raise the rate of, of these hourly employees. It raises the price of everything. Well, and they've already got a contract that will make this widget for X number of dollars. And if they go uh, over that, then it's out of their pocket. Yeah, but they've got, you know, all the, the insurance benefits and medical and dental. Uh, I mean, but that's part I, of it, too. I, but I think that's part of what um, uh, UAW is striking for is to get some of their medical benefits after retirement back. Because GM has dumped all of that. A couple of uh, non-related stories that I wanted to tell you about. Morelli. Sounds familiar. Morelli, parts supplier. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Mopar, right? Will shut down one of its Italian plants producing components for internal combustion engines as the business has become unsustainable due to the transition to electric mobility. Ah, forget about it. (laughs) (laughs) Forget about it. This is from Italy. This is not from New York. Oh, okay. I know a guy. The plant currently employs around 230 people and manufactures plastic components and processes aluminum components for internal combustion engines. 
It's aluminium from Italy. Aluminium. Alu- aluminium. aluminium. Yeah, aluminium. Uh, North America, Mars, yes, you've, you've been up there to Auburn Hills, Stellantis headquarters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. North American COO Mark Stewart says the company is not leaving the headquarters complex in any shape, form, or fashion. But the areas he says we're not using, we're looking at some different repurposing for those. And you it know, is a complex. It's huge. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. But they've also, you know, several years ago, shut down the museum. Yeah, and it's right out there on the edge. So I could see that it would be an easy peel off to um, turn into a restaurant yeah, well, something. Uh, yeah. There's not much out there. body shop. Out yeah. there where it's located is kind of in the beautiful hills of Auburn. Uh, it's and Auburn it's, hills, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, to drive up there, beautiful green. Yeah, it green. would be another you know, office complex type thing. Like many office buildings around town, including GM's Renaissance Center in downtown Detroit, the hulking complex in Auburn Hills has sat underutilized since the pandemic ushered in the work-from-home era for many companies. Solanas has maintained a flexible, hybrid work approach even as some other companies have asked employees to return to the office full or part time, thought that was interesting. Well, and think about what that's going to do to property values everywhere. You know, they say you know, and not that I'm a fan of San Francisco, but San Francisco uh, office property values have plummeted, mm-hmm. though housing values are still climbing. But because all of the work at home stuff, all of these offices are virtually empty, which is what you know. Stellantis well, here's an idea. About. So if you're looking for housing, go to the office building that's looking for tenants and go up there and say, oh, I'll take, uh, I don't know, 484, 4,500 4, square feet over there. And move you and 20 of your friends into it. Yeah, absolutely. Put up some dividers. I have my little. Uh, the little king sheets like the girls did before from the <laughs> Revel Rally. There you go. <laughs> that's it. Oh, my gosh. Well, why not? I mean, I, I'm game. Would you do that? That would be the the, the, the public restroom on the floor might be a little crowded <laughs> but, at times. But that is, the, to a degree, that is what has happened in some parts of some cities. What they call the gentrification of the city is, you know, some of these warehouse districts, people have gone in and and bought up, yes. and built lofts mm-hmm. and condominium complexes. So <clears throat> makes total sense. Well, yeah. I will say this, you know, where we are speaking to you from over here in the sugar land area of texas there is the old sugar mill Mm -hmm. imperial imperial sugar mill it's the building that's left because the company is long gone uh out of here they've moved over to louisiana anyway so they're trying to repurpose all of that and a new company that goes in and buys property or renovates properties and Mm -hmm. so they've got their eyes set on the old what they call the char house which is the red brick building out here at the end of the street yeah Mm -hmm. and uh so i think what they're going to do is is that i think they're going to turn those upper floors of that building into law how many years has this been discussed well yes many many years that's true but uh they're they're in the process it's going to happen and already don's looking to buy one Already, people are bitching about the fact that all the traffic that it's going to bring to the area, because right behind it, if you look at it, uh, especially if you fly over it, that's the ballpark back there. Right. Mm-hmm. And so it's all coming this away. And that's mm-hmm. actually a historical marker, too. It is. And they also have the, uh, <clears throat> what's the, the, the towers there from the chimney towers. Oh, the, those chimneys, the stacks, I don't know what they use those for. They're still there. Yeah. Uh, and the old water tower is still there, mm-hmm. although it's not used. Yeah. It's a marker, basically. But uh, it's a it's an interesting proposition. But Well, I use the red building as my mark. To, I need to turn before I get to Well, it. and there's also a neighborhood back there, too. There is a neighborhood back there, a very strange neighborhood, yeah. if you've ever driven yeah. through there. Oh, but yeah. It's different. <clears throat> That's where you hear the banjos. Ding, 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 ding. Time now for the cruise-in calendar. Uh-oh. Conrad. Cruise in calendar. Well, we got Woody's Waterfront. <laughs> got Woody's Waterfront. Well, that's <laughs> thank, not thank a cruise in. Much. That's an event. Uh, Nifty Fifties tonight uh, up off of uh, Buckthorn in the Woodlands. Uh, classic cars only. Uh, H-Town Showdown at Lake Houston Parkway in Houston. Um, the Buddha Show and Shine at Cabela's in uh, Buddha, Texas. In Buddha, Texas. You just like it could be that say, name. It could be Buddha, but it's, it's, it's not. It's, yeah. Dust to Dawn Car Meet at uh, 
copperas copperas c o p e r we are not going to any dusk to dawn anything <laughs> cradle to grave maybe but i've seen that movie it does not end well for the <laughs> the uh, route 71 car cruise uh, meet at bucky's um and uh, head out from Katy on a car cruise uh, roll out at 10 a.m uh chaos car crew meet at Hometown Sports Bar in Pearland is uh, tomorrow, starting at 10 a.m. The Lake Houston Brewery Show. Why do they all have all these meets at the uh, related with alcohol? Booze, yeah, exactly. Is a Lake Houston Brewery Show in Huffman, Texas, starts at 11 a.m. Cars and cocktails. Where's the Whiskey and Women Show? That's what I want to know. Cars and <laughs> cocktails at Little Woodrow's at 11 to 3 p.m. tomorrow. And uh, the Arabia Shine Show Motor uh, auto truck and bike show <laughs> in Harwin Drive in Houston. Harwin Drive? At Are the, you kidding me? The Arabian yeah, horses? Shrine. Arabian horses? <laughs> no. Uh, the, on Harwin. Yeah, you got I a can, lot of everything down. I was going to say, uh, all I can think of is uh, you can go down there and buy a rip off uh, purse well, or something. Well, I was say, it could, be, it could be in the shape of a jacket, maybe. <laughs> $10 jacket. Rolex. Mm -hmm. And the poop the box jacket. cruisers, mate, because he told me I wasn't allowed to say shit anymore. Um <laughs> But well, you did tell him that. In Vider, Texas. So Mars can go get his EV charged there. In Vider. Think of all these things that are happening out there in the Golden Trail. Oh, it's, it's, it's a happening place. You know, there's only so much control I have yeah. on this show. I'm going to think I, about I what I'm going to be doing next Saturday morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. More off the <laughs> air. <laughs> yeah. um, time now for this hour's car review. The 2023 Kia Telluride. Comes in these trim levels, the LX, S, EX, SX, SX Prestige, with subsets of X Pro and X Line. I know, it's very confusing, I agree, uh, but they do this, so they package up all of the trim levels with the different stuff that they put in them. All right. Uh, what size? This is a standard SUV. I'm going to call it a midsize, but it does have three rows of seating in there. How many passengers? Total of seven, if you can squeeze them in the back. Exterior changes from last model year, none. Exterior features. Proportional upper and lower grills with modern and unique headlights. You know that this is a Kia coming at you. Black wheel opening moldings. Uh, from the side, it looks like all other SUVs in its class. Uh, tops of the rear taillights turn in at the top under the rear glass. What I liked about it, the unique front and rear styling, that's a Kia exclusive. You don't see it on any other vehicle, and they've done it with lighting. It's pretty amazing. What could you, if the lights are off or the car's off, you don't really pay any attention to it. When you turn it on, the daytime, pretty good looking. The daytime running lights have got the, the rectangle the uh the rectangle anyway uh what could use improvement not sure uh maybe have a more blingy version i don't know interior highlights here's where the kia really shines we had the upscale optional terracotta package with quilted upholstery curved instrument and infotainment screen is one easy to use controls that are nicely labeled. What I liked about it, Android, Apple CarPlay, standard. What could use improvement? I would say an L version, a longer version. Mm -hmm. Give it another foot that you could put it back there so you have all three rows of seating and then and you've got storage. some storage behind it because when they do this with three rows of seating and a size of there's vehicle, no this is, there's none back there. Engine. 3.8 liter V6, which is a big V6, mm -hmm. 291 horsepower, 262 pound-feet of torque, eight-speed automatic transmission. Both two-wheel drive and four-wheel drives are available depending on the trim level you choose. Tow rating, 5,000 pounds. Miles per gallon. It's rated at 18 city, 24 highway for combined at 21. I got 22.6, over 333.3 miles pretty good for that size vehicle it is you call it a midsize i think it leans the large side of midsize Pro probably so uh they call it a standard suv well a, a chevy suburban falls into the same category mm -hmm. and i can't compare those two yeah, i no, think no. the bourbon's bigger it oh, is that's why bit. i'm yeah, saying yeah. yeah 
Um, Riding handling, smooth and easy to maneuver in parking lots. I mean, this thing is a dream. What could you use improvement? I put a big question mark there. I don't know. I don't know how you can improve on this. And they're selling like hotcakes. Yes, and I can see, see a lot. Yeah. And I can see why. Because the base trim, good value. base trim price is fifty one seven eighty five. The price is tested, which is, as you know, uh, is top of the line, fifty four one twenty base model price and winner of Edmunds top rated award thirty five eight ninety. If you're in the market for a mid to large size SUV, I encourage you to shop it. Go drive it. You might like it. Competitors include the Hyundai Palisade for thirty six four. Built on the same platform. The Honda Pilot for thirty seven. And the VW Atlas for thirty seven seven twenty five. So they're all right in, that in there. Same range. Yeah. Uh, shop, shop, shop. This is a highly competitive vehicle in its size and price range and that's what they have built this for to sell lots of them and they have done an excellent job on this one and i can't put down the vw atlas or the honda pilot just remember that each are different uh this one is an american design uh and i don't even whether it's built in america or not but honda pilot is japanese designed and made in Japan, I believe. And the VW Atlas German in three seven seven twenty five is its price. So they're all right in there together. Shop, 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 and don't be fooled by just the brand name. Uh, you know, Kia's been well known for their ten year, hundred thousand mile warranty, mm-hmm. and uh, financing is available. A lot of it through the actual manufacturers. Uh, leg of financing assembled so. in west point georgia which one the telluride yeah now the, the kia the kia telluride yeah. which i just reviewed yeah. west point georgia yeah okay all right very good uh the nwl time car talk show is available 24 7 through the iheart radio sh- uh, app i uh, just look for in Will time car talk we also video stream on facebook youtube and in Will time.com podcasts available and over a dozen of the most popular podcast outlets. The In-Wheel Time Car Talk Show continues right after this break. The original group of Loopy Tortilla Restaurants will have you telling your family and friends just what the original recipes mean when it comes to the best fajitas in Southeast Texas. Founder Stan Holt invites you to visit the original Loopy Tortilla near I-10 and Highway 6. Here's the original house that inspired the design of all the rest and the original charm that helped make Loopy Tortilla the go-to destination for Houston Tex-Mex. Speaking of original, nothing can compete with the original lime pepper marinade that everyone will agree makes Loopy Tortilla award-winning beef fajitas the best anywhere. Loopy Tortilla Katie is another location that gives you the same quality and service Houstonians have come to expect at Loopy's. It's located just off I-10 of the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard in Katie. Find yourself in Aggie Land? Head to the Loopy Tortilla and College Station, located just around the corner from Kyle Field. It's a great place to enjoy those famous frozen margaritas before or after the game. Headed east to Louisiana? Stop in at the Loopy Tortilla in Beaumont. It twos on I-10. You can't miss it. The original group of Loopy Tortilla restaurants invites you in for the best Tex-Mex anywhere. You own a car you love. Well, why not let Gulf Coast Auto Shield protect it? Houstonian John Gray invites you to his state-of-the-art facility to introduce you to his specialist team of auto enthusiasts. We promise you'll be impressed. Whether you're looking to massage your original paint to a like-new appearance, apply a ceramic coating, install a paint protection film, nano-ceramic window tent, or new windshield protection called ExoShield, Gulf Coast Auto Shield is where Houston's car people go. Curbed your wheels? Instead of buying new, why not have them repaired? How about a professionally installed radar detector? Gulf Coast Auto Shield does that too. Get a peek inside the shop and look at the services offered by getting online and heading to gcautoshield.com. Better yet, stop by their facility at 11275 South Sam Houston Tollway, just south of the Southwest Freeway, and get a personal tour. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is your place to go for all things exterior. Call them today, 832-930-5655 or gcautoshield.com. The award-winning In Wheel Time Car Talk Show is available on the most popular podcast channels out there in 30-minute episodes. We realize our three-hour live show can be difficult to catch in its entirety, so now you can listen every day to a convenient, fresh 30-minute episode. Check us out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Audible, along with a dozen more. 
In Wheel Time has the most informative automotive guest interviews and new car reviews, along with popular features including Conrad's Car Clinic and This Week in Auto History, along with automotive news headlines. Our live broadcast airs every Saturday, 8 to 11 Central, on InWheelTime.com, the iHeart app, and on YouTube. Be sure to say hello when we're broadcasting from the Tailpipes and Tacos Cruise Inn, Autorama, and the Houston Auto Show, among others. Now, it's easier than ever to hear about all things automotive all week long. You're invited to join fellow car enthusiasts in becoming part of the ever-growing In Wheel Time Car Talk family. Don't forget those 30-minute podcast episodes on your favorite podcast channel. That's it for this podcast episode of the In Wheel Time Car Show. I'm Don Armstrong, inviting you to join us for our live show every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and our InWheelTime.com website. Podcasts are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeart Podcast, Podcast Addict, TuneIn, Pandora.